day we're gathered in your name calling out to you your glory like a fire awakening desire will burn our hearts with truth you're the reason we're here you're the reason we're singing open up the Descending like a cloud, you're standing with us now. Lord, unveil our eyes. You're the reason we're here. You're the reason we're singing. So open up. Like a decent crowd in there, right? glory, <laughs> show us your glory, show us your power, show us, show us your glory, Lord. Show us, show us your glory, show us, show us your power. Yes. 
to worship, singing for all that he has done for us. But something else that should draw us to worship is the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Right before Jesus gave the great commission to his disciples to say, go and make more disciples, he said to them, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. All authority has been given to Jesus Christ. And then later on in Romans, when Paul is telling us how to be saved, he says, that you have to confess that Jesus is Lord. And what that means is you have to make Jesus Christ the authority to which you answer. And if you've never done that before, I know that that can be scary, turning over the authority in your life from yourself or from whatever to Jesus Christ. But he is a good king. He is a good Lord. He is a good authority to which we can bow down to. And so right now, if you would just with me bow your heads in the name of Jesus and just submit to him whatever in your life has not been turned over to him whatever in your life you've not given him authority over and just surrender surrender to the king of kings the lord of lords and worship him
Yours is the name above 
we lift up your name for it is in your name that chains break that fear has to bow that Satan has to leave in Jesus Christ we just call upon your name as our king as our Lord and say that you are good and what you say is good and is right and is just and we submit to your authority our lives belong to you Jesus, we worship you and we ask you to teach us in this time. Use your Holy Spirit in this place. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. Amen. Let's give God a hand clap. Who's glad to be in the Lord's house? Amen. Uh, hey, that's fine. You can have a seat. You're fine. Go ahead. Sit down. Thank you for being here. Hey, let me just do this uh, real quick. And then I've, I really, really do have a word from the Lord this morning uh, that I want to share with you. Um, if you're here, I know we're still in this pandemic. Have you heard? We're going through a little different day. But uh, if you're visiting for the first time, we got a card right there in that pew back that looks like this, all right? It is multi-purpose. I'm going to talk you through it real quick. If you're visiting this morning, I want you to take this card. It says, Get Connected. Uh, fill out your information. Uh, give us all that stuff. It's got other stuff about the church. Um, on your way out, you can put it in our offering boxes or you can see someone at our Connect Center, our guest information little area there. We've got a gift for you uh, that's been sanitized, clean, all that good stuff. Multi-purpose, I said. Flip it over. Um, we're in a new day. Um, if you feel led to respond, uh, maybe through the worship, uh, through the preaching, um, you can do that by responding on the back of that card, okay? So fill that out, respond. Maybe you, you need to make a decision or maybe you want to make a recommitment. Uh, you can do that, do the same thing. Drop it off in our offering box or see one of our greeters, hand that to them. Uh, one thing don't do, because we, we want to continue to keep a safe, sanitized, spacious experience here. Uh, don't use it to make a paper airplane when the preacher's boring or spitballs. Uh, we want it. I know he's boring sometimes, but please don't do that. I, I used to do that back in the day, paper airplanes, spitballs. Don't need you to do it, okay? So fill that out, and, uh, and we would greatly, greatly appreciate it. Um, hey, thank you for being here. Uh, you could be many, many places this morning, uh, but you chose to be here. Uh, at our church, Woodstock, Panama City Beach. For those who are visiting with us uh, this morning, let me introduce myself. Uh, I am Jason Williams. I'm the campus pastor here. Uh, we are a campus of First Baptist Woodstock uh, up, up there in Woodstock, Georgia, and uh, we are so grateful uh, that you're here. Uh, I do recognize some visitors, but most of you guys are regulars, and I do appreciate that. Uh, hey, really believe God has given me something. I want to continue um, what I started on last week. And through the summer of 2020, and I, I do think this summer and 2020 will go in the history books for generations to generations. I believe what we're going through needs to be, you need to take note of what we're going through. It is going to be a history lesson. And through this summer here at Woodstock Church in Panama City Beach, I'm praying that we'll do two things. And you're going to hear me repeat this over and over again. One, simply hit reset. I'm walking us through a sermon series or a sermon study this, ser this summer called Reset. And I messages that God is laying on my heart to challenge not just us but me and everyone here is that we would just simply hit reset and the second thing i want you to know and you'll hear this throughout the summer is to live a life of abundance and i know what you're thinking what in the world are you talking about live a life of abundance have you watched the news what is abundant living out there right now are you seeing the division in the world today? Pastor Jason, people are angry. Trust me, I know. I was on the road last night. They're very angry 
ticked off people. They're, they're meaner than they've ever been. Can I get a witness? Am I just the only one seeing it? Now, some of you are the mean ones, okay? <laughs> some of you are the mean ones. And then it's okay. We've all come unsettled during this pandemic. Let's all agree to that. We've all said some things we wish we would not have said, right? Or is that just me? Come on now, help me out. Are you, <laughs> we've just been unsettled. People been angry. So many questions, yet so many opinions, right? You say, I don't know what you're talking about. All right, take your phone out, go to Facebook, and you'll see what I'm talking about. All right, so many opinions. Uh, so many different things. Which brings me to my approach and how I'm going to preach over the next couple of weeks. I want to have, I want to preach, because that's who I am, I'm a preacher. But I want to do it a different way. I want to do it in a way as a conversation. I really just want to have a conversation with you. A conversation on the topic, reset. Why we need to reset. Why we need to set it again and do it differently. And when I think of the word conversation, my mind goes back to the many conversations that I had as a child. What I did and my parents did. And as a child, we would have conversations when things got out of control. Does anyone know what I'm talking about? And my parents would come into the room and they would say this word, Jason, we need to have a conversation. Help me, Jason, we need to have a conversation. And the conversations did not just stop there. As a youth or a young adult, they just changed scenery. When I was a child, it happened in the room. When I was a youth, young adult, it would happen around a table or a living room. And it would always happen at the end of the day, sometimes the beginning of the day, never during the day, because people had to settle down. People had to calm down. It was less distracting at night. And my parents would say, hey, we need to have a conversation. As an adult, it would happen on my phone. Someone would call me and they would say, Jason, when you get a second, we need to have a conversation. Um, as a parent now, I find myself going to my own kid's room, kneeling by the bed and saying, we need to have a conversation. As a spouse, we have this all the time, spouses. At the end of the day, one spouse will say to another, hey, I know things are busy. I know things are out of control, but we need to talk. Anybody ever had one of those? We need to have a conversation. To a friend, we would say, we would text them and say, hey, when you get a minute, bud, friend, bro, whatever, we need to chat. We need to have a conversation. And all these conversations was about resetting something. We, we needed to talk through some things. We were looking into the situation and trying to find a solution and through those things, there's two things we wanted. We wanted faithfulness and we wanted forgiveness. Those were the two things we were seeking in the conversation. So this morning and over the next several weeks, I want to preach to you in a way of a conversation, a conversation way. And here's what we're going to do over the next couple of weeks. We're going to check into this verse that we introduced last week, John chapter 10 and verse number 10 and by the end of the summer you're going to know this verse you're going to have it memorized because i need you to understand this verse it says this a thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy and check out this promise from jesus I have come so that they may have life and have it in abundance. So here's what we see in this verse. Jesus says, I have come that you may have what, church? Life. And not just life, but you may have this life in abundance. And we learned last week that this word abundance basically means 
a large quantity of it. And unpacking this verse, we realize that the thief comes to seek, to destroy, and to kill. But Jesus comes that you may have life. It kind of reminds me of the promises that the thief gives us. It's kind of like vapor. It, go, it looks good and then it goes away. See, and we realize that there are some keys. And let me just say this. How many of you here this morning want to live an abundant life? I do. But conversation, that's what we're going to have. We're going to have conversations. And we got to understand that there are some keys to living an abundant life. And an abundant life just don't come, whew, there it is. But there's some keys to live in an abundant life. And in a time we're walking in now of uncertainty, of a lot of chaos, a lot of division, a lot of problems, as a Christ follower, as someone who proclaims Jesus in their life, you need to understand that this abundant life, it demands a total surrender, a complete surrender to who God is. So in order for me to grab a hold of this abundant life, I've got to understand this key ingredient, and it's simply surrendering, surrendering completely to who Jesus is a commitment to serve him. So continuing, what we learned last week, I want to do this as a church family, and even those who are visiting with us this morning, I want us to look at the subject again called worship. What it means. Why does it exist? How do we do it? And why do we do it? And here's what I want you to do. Conversation. Conversation. Here we are. Here's what I need you to do. Two things. Reset. Simply means set again. Do it differently. And I want us to have a conversation. I want us to unpack. I'm, I'm having a conversation with you about the subject of worship. I want us to remind us in Psalm 95. We, we learned this last week. Everything we need to know about worship is in Psalm 95. Everything you need to know about worship. Now, let me just say this. Worship, conversation, you're going to get tired of that. I know you are. Worship is not about what happens here on the stage. Worship is not what happens there in those pews. Worship is what is happening in your heart before all of this begins. And I want to talk about what worship is. And I want to talk about why we worship. And that's where I really want to land today is why we should worship. But, but let's unpack again, real quickly, what is worship? And I told you last week, and let me remind you this morning and, and grab a hold of this, worship is the act of placing ultimate value in something and, and let me just stop there every one of us will worship something okay you, you can't sit here and say i'm not going to worship anything all of us will worship something it is our choice what we worship it's your choice what you worship but worship in Christ, and why we, we worship Christ is because we're valuing, we're placing ultimate value on Jesus because Jesus engages us and embraces us in every aspect of our life. And we get that, we understand that. Every aspect of you, that is what worship, what controls you. And we, we talked about this last week. There are, there are three calls of emotion that verifies this. And the, number one is the call of emotion. We are called to worship in our emotion. That means sometimes we just let loose and let it go. Not just up here in our cars, in the act of worship, wherever that may be. We're called to worship in our will. We're called to worship in our reason and our thinking. So worship places ultimate value in something. Why? Because of what God has done for you. Has God been good to you? What has God done for you? 
And what you do is you worship the God who's done those things for you and because of you. And we create an inventory list of everything that God has done for us. And our value to worship is the knowledge of this very thing. But here's what, that's just an introduction or an introduction, a summary of what we talked about last week. What is worship? Here's where I want to land this plane this morning. Conversation. Why should we worship? Why is it important to worship? Now I want you to take your Bible, Genesis chapter 18 and verse 23. I want to look at this Old Testament story in Genesis 18. And I want to say this. We worship what we know. We worship what we know. We worship how much we know. And how we worship is expressed by the knowledge of what we know. And if you know the value of something, Jesus, and you place your knowledge in that, then you will find real, authentic worship. So we worship what we know. And in this story, there's four things I want you to understand. Abraham knew God. Child of God, because of relationship that you have with Jesus, you too know God. And every person in this building this morning, whether you are a Christ follower or an unbeliever, you can know God by four basic truths I'm going to give you this morning. Just four basic truths that will explain why we worship. Not just what is worship. And then I want to end on how do we worship. How do we take what we know and the why of it? And then how do we express what worship truly is? Genesis chapter 18, verse 23. Just going to read a couple of verses and then we'll, we'll preach through the rest of this chapter. Genesis chapter 18, verse 23. The Bible says this, well, Abraham stepped forward. Hey, some of you this morning, the reason you're not engaging in authentic worship because you ain't stepping forward. I'm just having a conversation, okay? Let me just be honest with you. Maybe some of the reason why the church is, not just our church, this is church all across America. Maybe it's time for the church. Maybe the church isn't being blessed. Or maybe people aren't coming to church because the church ain't stepping forward. Now, now bear with me. I'm talking about stepping forward in a God-centered way. Stepping forward. But Abraham, and I love it, he stepped forward. And he said, will you really sweep away the righteous from the wicked? Here's a basic truth, how Abraham knew God. And here's how we can know God. Here's why we worship. Abraham knew God in closeness. He stepped forward. And when you come face to face with who God is, you realize the value of God. And what this means is Abraham, he had a relationship with God. And through this situation, we can still worship God because we too, Christian, Christ follower, we too have a relationship with God. And we worship him because of this knowledge that we, we are close to God. God who created everything and the old terminology and the old saying, he is the alpha and omega. That means he is the beginning and the end. That everything in the middle of that, from the beginning to the end, God is sovereign. He's in control. And Christ follower, Christian, 
whatever you call yourself this morning, because you have a relationship with God, you are a friend to God. That's what gets me through. And I want to step forward in that way. See, Abraham, he knew God in closeness. He had a relationship. He had something he trusted. We're living in a day, in a season, that there's hardly anything we can trust. But you as a Christian, this is why we worship. We have a relationship in God. We can trust God. And Abraham had some faith in God. And maybe you can't really worship. Maybe you don't understand what worship is because you're lacking faith in God. Number two, not only did Abraham know God in closeness, but Abraham knew God in comparison. Verse 27, the Bible says this, Then Abraham answered, Since I have ventured to speak to my Lord, even though I am dust and ashes here's what I know for a fact that we are daily consumed by the challenge of being compared to something or someone daily we are consumed with being compared, compared to someone or something and if we live by Christ outside or if we live by comparison outside of Christ it will eat up every bit of spirituality away from us and destroy the realness of worship if we live by being compared to others outside of the will of Christ it will eat away our spirituality and it will destroy the realness of worship that's what we do with worship sometimes we we compare it we make it about this we make it about that but that's not worship but if we live by comparison in Jesus Christ who we are in Christ what we are like without Christ have you ever thought where your life would be this morning without Jesus have you ever thought who would be in your life without Jesus man that's a scary fearful thought right church so worship is understanding what our life is like with Jesus. And we value that. We understand that. And our worship, because we get who Jesus is, will be centered around what he has done for us. Let me give you a fact. We are changed not by being told what we need to do for God but by hearing the good news of what God has already done for us that's what worship is we're not changed by what we need to do for God we're changed by what God has always and will forever do for us number three here's how you can know God you know God in closeness in comparison but then Abraham knew God in character and I want to land there for a little bit I want to have a conversation with you the Bible says this in verse 25 you could not possibly do such a thing to kill the righteous with the wicked treating the righteous and the wicked alike God you you dare not do such a thing that's not you God 
you possibly cannot do that, God. Won't the judge of the whole earth do what is just? See, this morning, to understand why we worship is knowledge of his character, who he is. We worship him because he's righteous. Again, stay with me. We worship him because he's righteous. Why? Because he will do what is fair. He will do what is right. This past quarantine, pandemic, I've had a little bit of free time. Anybody else had any free time? And in my free time, I have planted me a little garden. Not just a little garden. <laughs> a lot of, lot of cucumbers. A lot of tomatoes. You need some cucumbers? I'm your guy. I got them all sizes. They're ready for you. I'm not a big cucumber guy. I just had a lot of spare time. Every time I was in the Home Depot or Lowe's, I wanted to pick up something to plant. So I have your cucumbers, tomatoes, peppers, all you need. And I, I'm not a gardener, so I had to YouTube and Google how to garden. And I noticed my, my tomato plants were getting out of control. So I found this guy on YouTube who grows these really large tomato plants. And he made an explanation. He said, in order, first of all, you've got to understand the main source of nutrients is that main stem. And those yellow things, I realized those yellow things, I had no idea, those yellow things represent the fruit. And these little bees, they fly around and you, you, they, they make that fruit, uh, they, they make it happen. He said, but there's some things in order to find, and all your nutrients is in that main stem, but there's things that are called suckers. And those suckers will pop up on the plant and you'll notice the suckers because they don't have that little yellow flower. Now those suckers, what they'll do uh, is they'll eat up all the nutrients of that, of that main stem and it'll cause your tomatoes to just be blah. So what you gotta do to those suckers is you gotta go out there daily and cut the suckers off. Who knew that? I had no idea. So I found myself every single day going to the tomato plant, looking for the yellow flowers and removing the suckers. And then I found my tomato plant just taking off. I got all the tomatoes you want. It reminded me of a verse. To know God in character, you need to understand the fullness of who God is. See, all those suckers had to be cut in order for the main stem to get proper nutrients. It reminds me of John 15, 7. And you know the passage, Jesus is just wrapping up, uh, I'm the vine, you're the branches, all that stuff. Bottom me, I and you, blah, blah, blah. You know it. And then he says in John 15, 7, if you remain in me, hear me, if you remain in me, the character and the knowledge of who God is, I'm talking about worship this morning. We're talking through this. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you. I need this this morning. I need this promise through this chaotic time where the world is so divided, where people are fighting left and right. Who knows what's going to happen in our world tomorrow? But I am standing on the promise of this text if I remain in God. Are you with me, church? The character, if my worship values who God is, if, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you want. Man, I need that. And it will be done for you. Here's what worship is this morning. Do not miss this. Do Write this down. Take it home with you. 
reflect on it this week this is what worship is worship is the process of reflecting on who he is and as you reflect on who he is in these moments of reflecting you find yourself to be healed by the very reflection of who God is and while you reflect on God God is healing you and in the middle of this he is pulling you away from those evil temptations and then you get it God your character is awesome I'm reflecting on who you are and as I'm reflecting I'll find myself worshiping in who you are and while I'm worshiping I'm finding some healing I'm, I'm not seeing what I want to say I'm not doing what I'm I want to do I find myself in a healing process and 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 because of this I'm I'm turning away from these evil temptations that's what worship is and when you build up on that you value that and when you value that when you park in your in the parking lot you understand this is not what worship is worship is pre-worship service that's what worship is Worship is pre-song. It's reflecting on who God is, the character of God Almighty. And understanding sometimes, right now, some of those suckers need to be cut off. And then let me just say this. It's okay. We're going through a tough time. Could God just be cutting those suckers off? Yes, he could be. And yes, he is. See, as we engage, church family, as we engage in this process of reflecting on who God is, and we engage in his character of worship, what happens is it changes us. We're reflecting on who God is. We're finding healing in that. And when we reflect on the character of God, we find ourselves worshiping that God is the ultimate need of our lives. We realize, God, you are the ultimate need. And that's where we find, church family, true worship. It's very simple, right? This is just back to the basics now. Conversations, we know this when we reflect on the true character of who God is, is when we value, we understand what real worship is, and that is true worship. See, Abraham knew God in character, and what worship is, because we have knowledge in something, we too know the character of God. But number four, Abraham, he knew God in communion. He knew God in communion. Verse 33. When the Lord had finished speaking with Abraham, he departed and Abraham returned to his place. I talked about conversations and that's kind of been the thing. But you know what I like about conversations? I don't like conversations at the beginning of the conversation. I don't like conversations during the conversation. I like, and I always seem to remember, the end of conversations. And even to this date, I love the end of conversation. Not because it's over. Because we were able to talk through some tough decisions. Decisions that needed to be discussed. Decisions that needed to be made. And conversations were made for tough decisions. They needed to be made and they needed to be in mutual agreement. You know what I like about the end of conversations? Is working out our differences understanding that there's a different opinion here but conversations allow us to make the main thing the main thing and work out our differences to walk out of that room out of that situation 
working out differences. You know what else I like about the end of conversations is that I've laid out completely how I feel. I've laid it on the line. Here's how I feel. Here's my conversation. But you know what I like more than anything about conversations? Yes, I like talking through the tough decisions. Yes, I like working it out the problems. Yes, I do like laying everything out. But you know what I like more than anything? Is working out a plan moving forward. How do we move forward with this? How do we move forward through this pandemic? How do we move forward in this uh, unprecedented time? How do we move forward in a day where it hits right at home? Just this morning, news, the Wendy's on fire in Atlanta. I was stopped there every day. Get me a Frosty. I ain't gonna lie to you. Got a Frosty every single time. Don't do Frosties no more. If there's a Frosty in my, it's a mini one, and those mini ones are mini. Have you ever had one? We'll give you a free mini Frosty. Don't, don't, even, don't even tempt me with that, okay? But, but what I'm talking about is this, this, this Wendy's that were burnt down. This is in our own home. And all of us can draw up opinions. But that's not what our country needs right now. Our country needs Christians to be what they represent. To know God in closeness. To know God in comparison. To know God in communion. To understand who He is. So why do we worship? Well, how do we worship? How do you worship, Pastor Jason? I get what worship is. I understand why we worship. But how in the world do we worship? How can I do worship well? Let's go back to Psalm 95. Let's concentrate on the text the psalmist is giving us. How do we worship there's four ways the psalmist tells us to worship. He tells us to worship in community. Verse 1 says, come let us. That means you may not agree with this, but this is what the text tells us, that we are called to worship as a group. There's nothing wrong with individual worship. But we're called to worship as a group called community what we look forward to and you look forward to some of you are back at church for the first time in weeks how does it make you feel to be with fellow christians isn't it an awesome feeling right there's nothing like having fellow christians come together and worship together what a spirit felt spirit led feeling Community. I love worshiping with you. I love it. Because all what God represents in your life, and all God represents in your life, and all God represents in your life, and all that God represents in all of our lives, packed up into this building, give me some of that, right? And all the cultures that is represented in this building, all the different backgrounds and how Jesus saved you and all the testimonies all in this building together worshiping who God is give me some of that that's how we worship and I know we're in this quarantine time and I know it's unprecedented and there's nothing wrong with watching online but there's going to come a day where we just need to hit the truth button that Jesus says and the word of God says do not forsake the assembling of yourself why because it's how we worship we worship together we worship in a group here's the second thing how do you worship 
You worship in truth. And how does the psalmist explain all these things? He, he explains it through the book of Psalms by, by explaining we submit to the Scripture. How do you worship? By submitting to the Scripture. By making this life-altering book a life-changing experience for you. For us we worship God by the truth of who God is are you willing let me ask you a question are you willing to submit to the scripture this morning are you willing to submit to the scripture are you are you willing church family to cut yourself free hear me out to cut yourself free toward authentic worship and if you'll get worship right post-worship service, this right here will be the best experience you'll have all week. Because you've experienced this already throughout the week. And now you've got the community together. And that's why we do church. We need truth, don't we, church? Number three, how can you worship not just through community, not just through truth, but you worship through the Spirit? See, the purpose of worship is to come into His presence, to bow before His presence. That's how we worship. So when we realize who God is, the knowledge of why we worship, His character, all that He is, when we get into this building, you let loose. You, you, you just let loose. Sometimes you let loose by but where you are with your mind and your, your emotions and your thinking. Sometimes you let loose by raising your hand. Sometimes you let loose and you're just bawling. You're bawling because you, you're embracing and you're valuing you're putting all your ultimate value in, in what worship is, who God is, the Spirit. You come into His presence. And then the psalmist ends with something really, really strange. And if you read this chapter, you're like, oh my goodness, why did you have to go there? Talking about, talking about worship, come let us, God, you're good, and then, man, we're in the wilderness. And here's what I think. In worship, how we worship, there'll be what we call gospel rest. Why would the psalm end this book of worship like this? The gospel is that Jesus came to the earth and he lived a perfect life and died a death that we should have paid paid and died so check this out the ultimate rest the ultimate rest is to believe the gospel and to take rest in this promise to believe the gospel and to take rest in this promise True worship is to have gospel rest. That means take value in the God. Quit being someone you're not. Quit being something you're not. And, and come to grip with this. This is what real worship is. This is what gospel rest is. This is who Jesus is. Don't miss this. He already loves you. Say that to yourself this morning. He already loves you. Gospel rest. He already gets you. He gets all of you. He understands you. And you don't have to work yourself to death. We rest in the gospel truth. Yet we put ourselves in the wilderness. 
when we try to make up worship. See, the beautiful thing in closing, the beautiful thing about worshiping God is this. All that God has belongs to me. And all that I have belongs to Him. He gets you. He already loves you. And when you get that gospel rest, when you understand you don't have to work yourself to death, that He already loves you, all that God belongs, all that He has, when you're a Christian, it belongs to you. And all that you have, you say, God, it belongs to you. I want it. I want it. And I want it. I want worship. I want Jesus. I want it to be authentic. I want it to run through me. And when it runs through me, and all that other stuff, doesn't matter. All that he has belongs to me. And Jesus, all I have belongs to you. Let's stand to our feet. We're going to have a time of response. Wherever you are this morning, conversation, that's all I want is a conversation. Get back to the basics. Understand what we already know. All right, this is, this is something you don't, you're like, oh, I just learned something new. You already know this. Let's worship the character of who God is this morning. Let it run through you. Let it run through you. Lay it at the feet of Jesus. Lay it at the feet of Jesus. Let's worship him. Listen to Lydia, she sings, respond this morning. And Cana.
really hope that's your prayer this morning. I hope that's your testimony as you walk out this church, what worship is. And uh, grab a hold of Jesus this week. We pray for our country. We pray for our churches. We pray for our community. We need Jesus. People need to G see Jesus in us. It's, it's so desperate. So desperate. Hey, church, I love you. Let me give you a couple things, and then you guys can be dismissed real quick. Pastor Johnny, the man legend, will be here next Sunday. All right? Now, here, here's the, uh, here's the uh, over or under. Are you actually going to be able to come in here at 1015? Is he going to wrap it up in time for you guys? Um, you know, the 9 o'clock service. So that's the over under. How many of you think he's going to? How many of you think he's not? No, just kidding. But, uh, uh, and you guys, uh, I can't wait. Uh, I love that man. Uh, he is my spiritual hero here. He is uh, my mentor. I hope and pray that you come next Sunday. Um, youth camp, real quick, after the service, we're going to meet really quick. Uh, go over our youth camp. We still are in need of sponsors. Uh, there are kids who, who still need help financially. Um, here's what I've done, church family. I'm not looked at what it's cost or going to cost. I'm trusting the Lord. And here's what I've determined, that we have 20 to 30 kids, and I'm going to make it the best week that they've ever experienced. I'm going to do my part to just sell out, make it a joyful experience to give them whatever they need to do, make it fun. And I just haven't looked at what it's going to cost. So I'm just trusting that our church family will come beside our teenagers and help them. Um, here's what I do know is that uh, Woodstock Band uh, will be with us. Um, the student pastor for Woodstock uh, Central be, will be with us as well. And I'm just excited. I'm excited. So pray for us. We'll meet here uh, right after the service, okay? And, uh, and in the end, uh, I'm just glad things are coming on our schedule. Uh, men, I want, you, I want to go ahead and put something out there that you're going to hear me talk about. Um, we're doing 40 days of revival. The Real Momentum Ministry, uh, Pastor Johnny and Pastor Jeremy's teaming up with them. And we're hosting uh, one, of the, uh, one of the weeks here at the end of July, July 27th through the 31st. Uh, well, Pastor Johnny will be with us. Um, um, Pastor Jeremy will be with us. And it's, it's calling all men to revival. Uh, and I really do. I, re believe, I believe this, man. I believe it starts with you, okay? Uh, so, man of God, make a commitment to be here that week, okay? I love you. I am so thankful for you. Thank you for worshiping with us this morning. You're dismissed. Yeah.